Today's episode is sponsored by Buffy, the comfy and sustainable bedding company. Each Buffy comforter is made from literally 100% recycled water bottles and feels so fluffy. Get it? Buffy? Buffy keeps you at the perfect temperature so you feel cozy without overheating. You don't have to worry about sneezing either. It's hypoallergenic and shuts out dust, mold, and mites. You can try a Buffy comforter in your own bed for 30 nights, and if you don't love it, return it at no cost. Listeners can get $20 off by visiting Buffy.co and entering code SAF. That's Buffy.co, promo code SAF. Golden wants to change the way you experience jewelry. Their necklaces, rings, bracelets, and earrings are made by hand when you order. That way, you can customize your piece. Get a special chain link for your chubby wrist, use your favorite phrase, or turn that inside joke into a wearable piece. Golden makes it personal. I got a few lovely little pieces from Golden, a special bracelet for a special girl whose birthday is this weekend in April, hint, hint. And I got a necklace for myself that has a really cute engraving of boobs. And I got cute little rings for the SAF team with a little engraving, which is a great gift idea. And uh, don't forget that Mother's Day is coming up for those of you who have mother figures you want to give gifts to. Golden is a female-owned company, Hi Ladies, that shares their profits with causes that empower women around the world. SAF listeners can use code SAF for free shipping around the world on any Golden order through May 31st. That's G-L-D-N dot com and code SAF for free shipping on your handmade personalized jewelry. Match me. I'm Sophie. I'm April. And this is She's All Fat, the podcast for body positivity, radical self-love, and chill vibes only. This week, we'll discuss wedding diet culture, comfy chairs, and body posy wedding recommendations. And wedding planner Allison Davis will be answering wedding questions with me. April, where are you right now? In the car. Get over here, bud. Tell us those obsessions. What's up, everybody? It's April. I'm back with my weekly obsessions. First off, I just need to share this isn't an obsession. It's simply an anecdote for your pleasure. Okay, so I just left urgent care as I want to do. (laughs) It's just a sickly bitch. Um, This time it's just because, you know, I have asthma and whatever. Shout out to my asthmatics. Y'all already know when it comes to spring, we out here. So I'm leaving um, urgent care and outside this guy is like taking a video of something and I didn't see what it was yet. And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, did you tell, like, I just told him about this. Did you see this? This is ridiculous. I finally looked to what he's talking about. There is a huge hornet's nest (laughs) cover, I guess bees nest or whatever, covered in bees like i want to say a thousand bees just right in the front door of the urgent care so imagine like leaving urgent care you're ill and then being stung by a bee mind you i'm extremely allergic to bees (laughs) extremely (laughs) so i just left and i saw thousands of bees and they're just sort of looking at me like bitch what the fuck is up like if you want (laughs) to come on down come on down and i'm just like so disturbed so i just sprinted away from the bees nest um and now i'm in my car so what's up these are my obsessions for the week number one my favorite netflix movie to all the boys i've loved before based on the jenny han books jenny han's an icon if you don't know the sequel is coming out which is really exciting i loved the first movie and they have recast one of the main boys as a black man (laughs) i love this basically the story of the movies is that this girl named laura jean she writes love letters to guys she has crushes on but she doesn't send them but one day her like nosy ass little sister sends them out and so the movie deals with the first couple guys who got the letters and then it ends with one dude named john ambrose and in the movie we see him and he's this white guy who shows up and he like has a little rose or whatever for her and so we're like okay so in the sequel this would be the dude ah psych jokes on you they recast john ambrose 
as a black guy, which honestly I support because, I mean, we all love Jenny Han, but in the book, they all, all the boys are explicitly white and the character is biracial. She's half Asian. So I love that Netflix clearly was like, um, <laughs> we're going to need a black, <laughs> we're going to need a black love interest. So you need to calm down. So I love it. Um, we're taking their jobs. Hashtag taking their jobs 2019. I want every white actor <laughs> replaced. <laughs> I want I want Jennifer Lawrence fired from every movie she's working on and replaced with Kiki Palmer. And I want it now. <laughs> it's my money and I need it now. I need white actors replaced with black actors for no reason. <laughs> and I need it now. It honestly feels like reparations. I 1 million percent support if you wanted to know my stance on that. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Wait, is it? mclaren or john ambrose oh yeah his full name is john ambrose mclaren so anyway i support this recast i need more random (laughs) inclusion recasting i think it's phenomenal second obsession okay so i'm sure soph has gotten into this if she hasn't yet she will but she convinced me to watch this flat earth documentary honestly i'm only 10 minutes in because i keep having to pause it because my sister said quote it's giving her migraines like (laughs) the just level of insanity and just mediocrity is like upsetting her so much that we have to keep pausing it but if you don't know it's called behind the curve which is complete bullshit it's about all these white men in the pacific northwest exclusively who believe the earth is flat and there's like one guy who apparently has a popular youtube youtube page about it but it's also kind of about how these like again white men in the pacific northwest specifically are sort of like obsessed with feeling powerful and important and knowledgeable in their field quote unquote their field being being a flat earther these white guys who don't feel like they have a lot of respect like some of them you know might still live at home with their parents some of them don't have the job that they wish they wanted but like they go on the internet and they're seen as experts and that makes them feel important and their ego is inflated and again masculinity is extremely toxic and it can even drive you to convince yourself that the earth is flat when i think we all know sweetie (laughs) that this bitch is spherical and she's spinning (laughs) like what so anyway i hope to be able to finish that in the coming days because it's hilarious but again i'm not sure because my sister who is my roommate keeps begging me to turn it off so we'll see final documentary you already know i've been hyping Billie eilish since she was like 14 years old (laughs) i'm obsessed with her her album finally came out like what she's had before has been like eps or maybe an lp and some singles but this is her first full-fledged album truly is like the emo teen like wet dream album it's ridiculous Like when you listen to the lyrics, it's like, Billy, calm down. Like she's so emotional. But I really love it because she always says in interviews, she's like, it's genreless. Like you can't put me in a box. Like she's one of those teens, which I just love. But I think if I had to describe it, it would be like, like what if Madeline Perot was like, you know what? I'm putting out a trap album. Like that's Billy Eilish. And so I really do stand her. I skip a lot of the album because some of the songs just like make me really sad. But they are good. I just, you know, I can't afford tears right now. So I just won't listen to a sad song. Um, but they are amazing. My favorite song on the album, well, Bad Guy, which I think is the newest single, is really fun for her, like, for once. I <laughs> like, an upbeat song. And then I also like one called Elo Milo or Elo Milo or something. Um, really like that. Also really like the fact that she had the nerve <laughs> to end the album with an overture. <laughs> like, okay. If I was a dramatic teen with the voice of an angel and pro tool knowledge, yes, I would make my own overture. <laughs> like, of course I would. So I really love it. I really support Billy. Is she edgy just to be edgy? Of course. Weren't you at 17? Like, get a grip. Some people are like, Billie Eilish is a plant from the industry. Like, Billie Eilish is fake. She's not even that talented. I'm like, calm down, okay? For an emo teen, she's incredibly talented. She's pretty grounded. And I love her. I love Billie Eilish. So check out her album. It's called When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Um, That is a lyric from one of her, again, dark, demonic-esque songs. (laughs) But um, I love her. So again, my obsessions this week are Black Recasting, this Flat Earth documentary that I have not finished, and Billie Eilish's new album. Um, So go check those out. And now, back to you, Soph. April. (laughs) Thank you for those obsessions. I've never (laughs) heard you have so much energy in your whole freaking life. Um, the bees really gave you a jolt of energy, I guess. Um, 
April wanted me to clarify for all of y'all that she was in urgent care immediately before recording this, and they did give her a nebulizer, which is like uh, steroids for if you have asthma, essentially. Um, and the steroids <laughs> really affect her. Um, that level of energy was so funny. Um, I loved everything about that, April. Thank you for those obsessions. I'm obsessed with your obsessions. I'm obsessed with you. I love you. <laughs> Uh, my other obsessions this week are, I finished You, no spoilies, but it was really wild. Um, really excited because, uh, Killing Eve is back. Um, I watched Killing Eve after April for months was like, you would love Killing Eve. It's a show made for you. It's made just for you. And I was like, whatever, whatever. And then I watched it and I was like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with this. So very excited about the first episode being out. I love my Queen Sandra O. I love everything about it. And then also I just want to give a little shout out to Birdie's Shoes. They sent me these really cute flats. I will save a highlight to my Insta page in case you want to see them. But like I haven't really been able to wear flats since I got plantar fasciitis. And Birdie's thing is that they're like um, slipper shoes or something. Basically they just have like a lot of padding in the bottom. And so I can like wear them out and about for like a little bit, still not for super, super long. Like I always have to go back and put in my <laughs> sexy orthotics before too long, but I really like them. Um, so if you have like sensitive little footsies like me, then, um, I recommend them. I like them. Okay. Let's move on to some Apple Podcast review shoutouts. Y'all know the drill. Please continue to rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts, and we will shout out your username right here on the show. And one day, one fine day, we will be on New and Noteworthy. Okay. Thank you so much to the people who left us reviews with these usernames. Um, Uber Verbosity, S-E Rose, 5683-A-I-I-H, Lindsay Lass, <laughs> Boot Scoot and Boogie, <laughs> Boot Scoot and Boogie, who are you? Please at me, Boot Scoot and Boogie, um, <laughs> and Bunny underscore Rabs, also a great username, oh my god, okay. Thank you so much also to our patrons. You keep the lights on for us. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. Thank you so much to the following patrons who have joined us on Patreon. Adrian Potter Yo, Kelsey Putnam, Kendra Watkins, Faye Sterniolo, Cassie Elizabeth Jones, I Ine Calgaro. Okay. Little tiny piece of news. Um, we're going on a short break. We're building a few of those in this season so that we have the time to create these more reported episodes. So we're taking next week off and then we'll be back in your podcast feed the next week. So April 25th, it's just a little break, just one week. Um, in the meantime, you can follow our social. We'll still be posting there. You can listen to all the extras. We'll still be posting on Patreon and you can buy our collab shirt with Daisy, which is linked in the show notes, and you can uh, watch my Insta stories, which will be, um, you know, continually more and more crazed as I stay up later and later trying to get all my work done. Um, okay, let's move on to uh, some tip jar. A Hannah wrote us to let us know about a plus size wedding dress line from the feminist wedding website, A Practical Wedding. Um, we've got links in the show notes for that. Okay. Also, we wanted to let you know about the Big Bride Club, which is Jane, Ingrid, and Abby. Um, they said, quote, there's really only one plus size specific wedding blog on the market now, prettypairbride.com. It's a great blog. Seriously, shout out to Chiffon, but it tends to focus on the more traditional brides. We're trying to be a resource for more alternative brides and those who don't feel necessarily feel like they fit in with the quintessential bridal feel. Um, we're also trying to give a platform to brides who don't have the means to hire a 5k plus photographer, but want their wedding to be shown and their story heard. So you guys can look in the show notes for the links to those two places, big bride club and pretty And their, um, big bride clubs also asking for submissions. If you have, you know, photo shoots or photos that you want to submit, um, those all sound very cool. Call for submissions. Are you fat and tall? 
How do you feel like being tall intersects with being fat or your experience of being visible in the world? Send me dat voice. I know I'm not April saying send me dat voice, but just pretend I'm April saying send me dat voice. Send me dat voice. And finally, of course, as always, got to give a shout out to our Patreon Facebook group for Team Paisley Moo Moo and above. This week in the Facebook group, people are talking about making your own fashion style. They're talking about good YouTube follows and they're talking about historical fatties. It's pretty fun in there. You can join us if you go to patreon.com slash she's all fat pod. Um, also every week we have an extra mini sode for our team. I love bread. Um, we asked a lot of Q and A's to Allison, who is the wedding planner. We talked to this episode. Those are the mini sode. Um, and also just all Patreons get some little audio extras as well. All right, let's get into the meat of it. <laughs> The meat of it. Hello, it is Friday night, and tomorrow morning I get to wake up and go to the dress rehearsal for Jack's wedding, which I really <laughs> can't believe because I've known him since seventh grade, and he didn't even like me in seventh grade. He thought I was annoying. Well, jokes on you, Jack. I'm still freaking annoying, but now you've asked me to be in your wedding, so. Which of us won? Hi, family. Today we're talking about weddings. I'm not having one yet, but a lot of y'all are, and you ask us a lot of questions about them. Luckily, my friend Jack asked me to be in his wedding party, so I recently went to his wedding. I interviewed Jack and his wife, Amanda, about their experience, and I talked to a really cool wedding planner about some of the questions y'all have asked us. So mazel tov and let's get into it, family, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health. Until the end of this episode, do us part. Jack, can we talk about how we know each other? So what's your story of our friendship? My story of our friendship is that you moved to Arizona and joined the school I was at in seventh grade Mm -hmm. and you had been homeschooled. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) And and we're from like, I don't know, like Amish town, Pennsylvania. Basically Pennsylvania. Yep. (laughs) Just Pennsylvania. Yep. Um, So you joined in seventh grade and I started liking you like in (laughs) third grade. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you liked me. I don't know. I think you just like needed friends. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and we're super friendly on like day one. But then we were really good friends like all of high school mm-hmm. and have stayed in like fairly consistent touch ever since then. So that's like 15 years, right? Crazy. So long. I don't know why, but I have a very distinct memory of you from... The, like, Grand Canyon trip in seventh grade. But, no, I remember, like, you you, you with your orange gloves, like, and I was, like, trying to talk with you at the, like, wherever we were having dinner with, like, hot dogs or whatever. And I just remember you being, like, okay. <sighs> like, rolling your eyes. And I was, like, okay, fine. Like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that hasn't changed much. <laughs> yeah. Uh Uh-huh. In high school, Jack and I were best friends doing all the cool things like Latin quiz bowl and um, a lot of APs together. He's been really supportive of me as we started the podcast. My thoughts as I, as you started your podcast, I don't know. I find you like very inspiring and interesting and like truly educating for me as a straight sized person which is not even a phrase I knew until I listened to your (laughs) podcast Um, I was so happy when Jack called me to be a part of his wedding even though he did it in kind of a silly way (laughs) Um, I don't know every member of I don't even know how to say like my 
side of the yeah. way have made fun of me for like asking if they would be willing to be part of the <laughs> wedding party. I didn't, I like, I thought that was normal. And also I think Amanda and I have both been made fun of for being like overly apologetic. <laughs> so I think that was just the first step was like, you were like, sorry, this is super annoying, but like, <laughs> just felt like a burden. I it mean, is. the whole thing, it is, it's like, you're asking people to fly out and spend a lot of money and like get a fancy outfit and a lot of other like we and didn't celebrate you. Yeah, and celebrate like, you. Can you like, come like watch me get selfish. married and then like be excited about <laughs> right. it? Right. For each member of the wedding party, I would call them and have like a really long 45 minute conversation catching up and then wait until they asked me how wedding preparation was going and then chat about that for a little bit. I don't know. You probably remember better than I do, but I think I was just like, also, I have a question. I was wondering if you might be willing to come and <laughs> be a groom's whatever. Yeah, it was funny. I was like, I remember being like, oh, no, is something wrong? Like, was your tone? <laughs> yeah, and each friend was like, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was really honored to be a part of the wedding, and I was proud to spend that money at David's Bridal, TBH. Weddings are just kind of weird things a little bit, all of the pomp and circumstance that goes with them. And when I asked them about the prep and planning, Jack and Amanda talked about how weird some of that rising pressure seemed to them. I think there are things that people say, no matter how well-meaning, that sort of play into the whole, like, the bride is the center of attention. And mm -hmm. there were so many times where, where like, somebody else, either, like, a parent or a member of the wedding party or me would talk about, like, how we would look. And somebody would be like, oh, they're not, they're not looking at you. <laughs> like, that's, you're not the focus. Which, first of all, like, everybody is allowed to look nice that day <laughs> or feel and good. Everyone <laughs> and all everyone did. Everyone did. And second of all, like, that puts some unnecessary pressure on the bride. Oh, for sure. Well, it just, you know, I mean, the whole thing about it is just, like, it, it just reinforces the, like, heteropatriarchal stuff about, like, isn't this woman valued for her body? Like, doesn't she look good? <laughs> you know? That body's worth at least two goats in a Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's a lot more weirdness where that came from. You probably know the old English saying that a bride should have something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. But did you know that according to this British book about folklore written in the 1800s, the something borrowed was traditionally the undergarment of some woman who has been blessed with children so that the clothes communicate fertility to the bride? Imagine wearing some other lady's underwear down the aisle. Listen, if you don't believe me, you can check out the Wikipedia page for the saying, which has an absurdly exhaustive catalog of times pop culture has referenced this saying. It's a present. Why? Well, you know the old saying? The, the old wedding thing? Huh? What is it? Something old. Something new. Something borrowed. Something blue. A lot of wedding prep nowadays similarly makes no sense. There's an intense heightening of diet culture bullshit for a lot of people, especially women, as soon as that engagement gets announced. I had gone 28 blessed years without hearing the phrase sweating for the wedding, but after researching this episode, <laughs> that blissful time is over. Hey, what's up you guys? It's Christina and welcome back to my channel. So it's about 8 p.m. right now and I was about to go downstairs to the gym to film another Sweating for the Wedding episode. Hey guys, I'm Cassie. And I'm Jacqueline. And welcome to the Bridal Boot Camp. And we're gonna celebrate by doing some shredding for the wedding cardio. Hey everyone, I'm Tanya, and I'm getting married in a year's time. I want to begin my marriage the healthiest and happiest that I've ever been. For that reason, I'm bringing you along on my fitness journey, and I'm calling it Sweating for the Wedding. Sweating for the wedding, baby! Woo! Hey guys, so I'm on my way to the gym. Um, I wanted to do a video because today we're doing a workout video. So 
wedding for the wedding is going to be today's video. There's a ton of videos and blog posts about sweating for the wedding, and to me it seems like the perfect encapsulation of the kind of weird bullshit that happens in the wedding industry. Which, now that I think about it, might be exactly the reason I've never really romanticized getting married, like the act of getting married. I've always wanted a special proposal and to be engaged, but the actual planning of this huge event seems kinda terrible. Sweating for the wedding, indeed. <laughs> Jack's wife, Amanda, is straight-sized. She's smart, sarcastic, funny, and all around the best match for Jack that I could have ever dreamed of for him. It really sucks that she felt that pressure, too. Honestly, part of my stress of my mom saying, I want you to get married in eight months instead of 18 months or 22 months was that I was like, now I have less time to get into my bridal body. <laughs> um, and I guess I had always envisioned in my young adult life, I was like, oh, as soon as I get proposed to, I'm going to get a personal trainer and start Nutrisystem. And I'm going to just like <laughs> totally fit for my wedding. And I did actually start a subscription box service, but I did that for like two months and I lost a little weight. And then I was like, this blows. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm not sure if it was a totally conscious decision where I like just embraced. I don't think it was, if I'm being honest. Like, I don't think I was like, fuck it. I'm beautiful the way I am. <laughs> I was just like, maybe magically I'll be like seven sizes smaller in two months, <laughs> which just didn't happen. And I definitely had moments a few weeks before the wedding where I was like, oh shit, I'm out of time. Like, <laughs> this is how I'm going to look. And it, I had a few moments where it was really, I was depressed about it. And even though rationally, I know it's really stupid and like he loves me anyway, or because and of, like good to look the way you look at the thing we have the most pictures from. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's definitely there though. And the, and the industry, I don't know, like you Google as a bride, like anything. And it's like all the listicles, like 20 things you need to do. Or like, here's a calendar starting four years out of everything. Oh my God. But I got, yeah, I got a spray tan for the wedding. I got fake eyelashes for the wedding, which are not things I will ever do again. <laughs> like they weren't bad experiences. It's just like not who I am, but it helped me feel a little more put together on my wedding day, I guess. Sure. And I don't regret that, but there is absolutely like the industry standard of like, these are the things you do. You whiten your teeth, you get your eyelashes done, you get your spray tan, you lose a bunch of weight. So I, I felt, I did feel that like you're trying to think of planning your wedding, but at the same time, you're supposed to be planning your body for the wedding. And totally. It, Diet culture is hard to escape everywhere, but it, there's this weird pressure about wedding days. That's like, it's the only day you'll ever take pictures again. It's like, Jesus. And like, I think most of the stuff is like, yeah, if I was going to get a lot of fancy photos taken, I like, I want to do the easy things I can to make sure I'm like having a day where I feel like I look good, that there's like a lot of weird diet pressure shit, like specifically around weddings. Our producer, Maria, was doing some interviews for an upcoming episode about costuming for stage productions, and she spoke with Grace, who is the assist assistant costume shop manager at Triad Stage in North Carolina, and also a seamstress, costume designer, and makes a lot of her own personal clothing. She sometimes helps people with wedding clothes and has heard similar things as well. I've had actors and brides both say that they're going to change their sizing oh, wow. in the amount of time um, that we're working on something. Now, whether that's going down or going up, um, that that's one of their goals. And for me, because bodies lose and gain weight in so many different areas, mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to plan for a body that isn't in front of me. Absolutely, yeah. I can only make it fit you now and if we need to adjust it later, I'm totally game for that. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather plan to succeed yeah. um, and embrace this this moment right here where you are right now. Yeah. And then if we fix it later, we fix it later. Like, you know. This 
is what a lot of the letters and questions we get about weddings focus on. The eternal pressure to be thin and get thin and be thinner and be the thinnest you can be and look your best because obviously your best is thin and people want to know how to avoid that talk for themselves and getting it from their friends and family. The thing is, I don't know how to avoid that. It seems hard. So as usual, when facing things that I don't know how to do, I turned it to an expert. I talked to Allison Davis, a wedding planner with the kindest voice I've ever heard about some of these questions. So my name is Allison Davis, and I am a wedding planner. My company is called Davis Row. Most of my clients come to me because they want to plan what is ultimately a really amazing experience for their guests. And one of the reasons why I started my business is because I felt like I wasn't really seeing um, a ton of representation in the types of weddings that I thought were beautiful and that I might want to have for myself one day. The wedding industry, it's no secret, is a lot of thin, straight white people. And so as a not thin, straight black woman, I felt like, well, where's where is this for me? Where do I fit into this? And if I got engaged tomorrow, who would I call to help me pull off the type of wedding that I know that I want to have? I think it's important for people to have choices. When you're dealing with someone who is maybe uncomfortable with body positivity as of yet, Mm -hmm. and they like, there might be some brides, I bet, who like talk a lot about dieting or something, or they'll be like, yeah, yeah, you know, or they're like, oh, I want to be a different size for the day of the wedding or something. Do you have any, like, I, it doesn't sound like you'd be the kind of person to be like, don't do that. But like, do you have a way that you try (laughs) to be like, that you try to be like, as gently affirming to them yeah like a pep talk yeah yeah most of what most of what I do with my clients is like some variation on a pep talk but when it comes to helping my clients feel more comfortable about what they look like on their wedding day part of what I tell them is that even though this is an important day in your lives obviously it's a milestone it's a big deal you still want to look and feel like yourself yeah you want to feel comfortable with yourself and you also want to keep in mind that like it's not like you're getting married in front of a bunch of strangers they know what you look like yeah it's all your family and your friends yeah. especially the smaller the wedding gets the more true that becomes the the last thing that people are going to come up to you and say on your wedding day is oh my gosh, you look so gross in that dress. Yeah. Oh my God, you are way fatter than I realized. <laughs> oh, you all of your chins. Like, that's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> People are not going to say that to you. In your photos, you're going to look at your photos and see yourself. If you hire the right kind of photographer, you are going to see yourself. It's really just about, like, getting real about what, you're really doing on your wedding day like what are you really celebrating why are why are all these people coming together they're coming together because they really love you and they want to celebrate you and they want you to know how excited they are about this moment in your life yeah now that I'm more body positive and like I you know know now the things about how like um most people who get who lose a bunch of weight gain it all back plus more within three to five years or whatever I like I recently was looking at photos of myself during like my most disordered time when I was like the thinnest I ever was, which was not thin. I was a size 12, 14. It was like, I never got, mm-hmm, I was mm-hmm. never going to be skinny, but like, I look at myself then number one, I don't look healthy. Like I look at my face and my eyes and I'm like, bitch, you're hungry. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh my God. Yeah. But like, like, my head looks so big and it's weird, pictures. right? It like doesn't, yeah. it no longer, when I remember <laughs> taking those photos and being like, yes, you look thinner than you ever have. And now I look at them and I'm like, oh, I don't look like me. Like I I sent one to my right. friend Nina and she was like, who is that? I don't like her. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I know it's weird. And now I feel it's like real. it's real. Like, I feel like if I, I'm so glad that I got body positive before my boyfriend and I mm-hmm. got to, you know, we're not engaged yet, but we've been together for five and a half years. So it'll happen probably at some point, but like it's coming, it's coming. But like if, <laughs> if, you know, I'm so glad I got to this point before that happened, because I think if I like, what tried to lose weight for a wedding and then Mm -hmm. 
like looked back at those photos later after I had gained weight back or something, I would feel so unhappy Mm -hmm. because I would feel like, like all I would see would be like, yeah, I dieted for two months to get there. And like, I don't really look like that. You know, like I want to look like me on my wedding day. Right. Exactly. No matter how much help you have, you could hire the, the greatest, most hands-on wedding planner in the world who just did everything for you and you never had to think about any planning. You, it's still a really intense time in your life. There are still a lot of things happening, a lot of things changing. You're combining two families, maybe two households. You're talking about money and your future and and where you want to live and if you want to have kids there's so many details that is stressful in and of itself if you add to that the stress of trying to lose an extreme amount of weight it's like it, it's it has to be unbearable like i don't yeah. know how i don't know how people do it i mean it's hard enough to stay centered through this process the to to add something on top of that which doesn't really have that great of a payoff it just doesn't seem worth it to me but at the same time as a planner it's like people always joke that we're like therapists and we are yes (laughs) we we deal with a lot of emotions we give a lot of pep talks we help people through a lot of very personal and complicated situations but There's only so much work we can do for you. You have to do a lot of work for yourself, too. Yeah. So if I have a client that comes to me and is just supremely uncomfortable with their appearance and really wanting to look totally different on their wedding day for whatever reason... I, I'm not, I can't talk them out of that. Yeah. So that's important to keep in mind too. It's like, I can't tell you what's important to you. I can't tell you not to feel a certain way. There's a big difference in experience between, oh, I've gained seven pounds in the last two years. I'm going to try to get Mm -hmm. off seven pounds versus like, oh, I've been fat my whole life, but now finally I'm going to use this to lose like 50 yes. pounds or whatever. I'm like, that's it's just not realistic. One of the unfortunate things about this industry is that a lot of people are trying to profit off of that insecurity, yeah. which I think sucks. It's like there's so many sweating for the wedding, like bridal personal trainer, like couples boot camp type of things. There's an effort to market them as though they are for people who are already very fit and want to stay fit, are already at the weight they want to be at and want to stay at that weight. Um, but that's not who it's for. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that that's not who it's for. It's it's meant to get at people who feel uncomfortable in their bodies and like they're supposed to be skinny or close to it as close as they can get to it for their wedding. Yeah. And that really bums me out. I hate to see that. Grace also had some thoughts about this pressure. I've had a lot of experience with brides. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times someone will come in and they're ordering the dress and they know what size they are Mm -hmm. in whatever sizing system they are used to. Used to. Yeah. Um, and so they really want to order that size. And because I have the sizing system of that dress in front of me, and I know that another size is going to fit them a lot better, Mm -hmm. um, I kind of have to weigh in my mind how to go about that in the right way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to use numbers because it's, just the easiest way to say bride says I'm a size eight and I say well you know with this dress you might want to get the 10 and then we can take it in at the bust Mm -hmm. because that's going to get the best fit for you and I say I want to make this dress you size Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and let's not worry about whether it's an eight or a 10 or whatever because this is about this dress being for you absolutely yeah and I am coming at it from a brain place of knowing that all of these systems are totally made up Mm -hmm. and arbitrary Mm -hmm. and shift. And um, in every bridal salon, 
8, 12, 14, 16, whatever number, Z, uh, you know, it it's whatever they decided yeah. it means. And for me, I just want to get you the dress that fits you. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you really do, like, your objective is to make them look beautiful and have that garment look stunning on them. Sometimes, like, they can't, you like, people just can't hear that because they're so wrapped up in, like, you know, but I'm a size whatever and I can't be this size, especially when it comes to wedding culture and, like, gotta gotta fit into the dress. Ooh. It's like, no, the dress fits your body. Yes. You don't fit into yes. the dress. Here's ah. the thing. <laughs> it is a system uh-huh. that you choose to participate uh-huh. in and it, it means nothing. It's yeah, so exactly. It's so arbitrary. <laughs> It sucks to have that kind of intense pressure put on how close you can get to some sort of arbitrary standard. Well, it's not really arbitrary, is it? It's, you know, some sort of white, heteropatriarchal, colonial standard, let's say. Yuck. As a groomsmaid who was going to wear a bridesmaid's dress, I was a little worried about having one that would fit me. Honestly, I was a little stressed about being the only fat person up at the front anyways, but I felt comfortable taking that risk because I felt comfortable communicating with Jack and Amanda. A lot of questions that we get about weddings center basically around like fat or larger women being worried that people will be looking at them in the photos because they'll be different or that the bride might be thinking about their weight or that it might be off-putting or something like that. You know what I mean? So like, I'm just asking if it ever like occurred to you at all. Honestly, I don't, I mean, I think by the time we were planning our wedding, you were doing your podcast. Yeah. But I think had you not been, we wouldn't have thought of it at all. And maybe that in some ways that's nice. Cause we're like body size blind, but in other, <laughs> in other ways, it would have been awkward if you hadn't felt comfortable being like, Hey, can you also make sure that the dresses that you pick go up to my size? Yeah. Cause I, I wouldn't have even thought of it. I think had we not, you know, been aware that you were doing she's all fat and like very open about issues like plus size clothing issues. Yeah. What was it like for you guys when I was like, Oh, can you make sure that you have this or whatever to like make sure the dress fit? What was that? What was that experience like for me to ask for that from you? I think you asked it like basically right after we asked you to be in the wedding party. Right. So it was, it was early enough that it was just like, Oh yeah, here's another consideration for us to keep in mind, like as we're making different decisions, because we've talked about just like our experience with wedding, with planning a wedding was like, there's just so much to keep in mind, (laughs) you know? And, and that includes like, not just our own preferences and desires, but like a lot of other people's. So just in sort of talking through it with you again, in retrospect, it's like, oh, it was so helpful to, for you to like, even though it required some self-advocacy, which is like kind of not ideal, you know, at least for a lot of people, like given the circumstances, which were like, by definition, you're one of our closest friends. It was nice. Yeah. Um, (laughs) It was, it was nice for us to just be like, okay, this is just a thing we need to consider as we figure out what the bridal party should wear. Yeah. I've been trying to figure out like what I could tell other straight size people who want to ask people to be in their wedding. Like what would be the best way to ask for sizes? Because like, or ask about accommodations because sometimes we get emails from people who are like, I'm straight size. I want to ask my fat friend to be in the wedding. She's not body positive. I don't know how to ask her this question without making her feel uncomfortable. You know, maybe like an easy way to do it would be to like send out an email to all the bridesmaids or something and be like, Hey, can you just respond here with like your sizes or preferences or measurements or any like accessibility accommodations? you know, or something like before you start to choose dresses. Cause I can imagine how there could be a situation where a straight size bride would kind of get their heart set on a certain bridesmaid's dress or something. And then it would be like a hard situation for someone in the party to have to be like, uh, that doesn't fit me. And then they would have, to, it would be like very obvious why they had to change. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, what I tried to do was send group, like mass emails to everyone about things, but, um, I think, 
in retrospect, I probably should have. I think what, you know, you had already told Jack your size and then I'd pick some dresses and then I sent a mass email and said, pick one of these dresses. But in retrospect, if I were doing it again, and not just for you, but for anyone else in the wedding party who, you know, maybe had some kind of insecurity or accessibility issue and never voiced it to me, like I could have just said, you know, can you tell me, everyone tell me your size, um, preferences, like maybe some people have insecurities about sleeveless dresses and wanted like one option with sleeves or I don't know, a, a variety of things that I could have asked going into it to make sure that everyone would be comfortable and I wouldn't be singling anyone out. Cause it is like work to find stuff. I mean, the email that you sent, I thought was perfect. You had like 30 options in there. I was like, there's so many. And then you were like shoes, like whatever. I don't care. Like wear whatever you want. <laughs> like it was, it was so easy. I was like, okay, great. And there were like a bunch of options for me. I hadn't like ever looked at David's bridal stuff before, but they go up like Uh, I don't remember what they go up to, but I was definitely not the small, like, or the largest size there. Like, just thinking about how you, like, initiated it, which, again, required, like, I recognize that it requires a level of self-advocacy that, like, not, and comfort, like, not everybody has. But it then, like, totally put the onus on us, (laughs) you know? If neither of you had thought of it, because it's not in your experience, and... I had waited for too long, then it would have felt like, oh boy, now we have to accommodate this, you know, as opposed to the fact that I told you right away, you're like, great, now it's on me and I can figure it out. I asked Jack and Amanda about choosing those bridesmaid dresses and how Amanda thought through it. Yeah, I mean, I also wanted to give people a choice and I'm sure there are a lot of brides who are like, everyone needs to look exactly the same. And that's fine, I guess. But if you do that, you need to be very aware of what everyone's needs are. But I didn't see a problem with being like, here's a color or a color scheme I like. Pick any style. Or I didn't actually let you pick any style. I still like selected some that I thought kind of were the same genre of yeah but let you pick from that. And I feel like that's a really easy, and it's, it's more common now too. I think back in the day, you know, everyone wore the same dress, but now it's easy to be like, okay, I want like, you know, angry sea blue, but (laughs) pick whatever version of that you want, as long as it's in that color. And that's, that makes it easy for everyone to pick what will look best on their body. I also think having the different styles available lessens the fear that people have written in about, about being like standing out in a huge way, you know, like if everyone can wear a different dress, then it it doesn't make it so much like thin girl, thin girl, thin girl, fat girl. It's like, everyone's wearing like their dress that court, like we all look different we all coordinate and we like are complimenting each other, you know? Maybe it's rare to have this kind of friendship. I don't know. That level of comfort is a necessity to me. I'm no longer willing to have friends who don't support my whole self, and I feel really lucky that the people close to me have decided to take this journey with me. I know not everyone has that, so I really am grateful for how Jack and Amanda approach this. I was worried about a few other parts of the wedding, too, namely um, chairs and having gluten-free options, that kind of thing. Everything went great the day of because we had these open discussions where I said my needs and they were like chill about everything. (laughs) I really love Jack and Amanda's insistence that it's okay to ask for accommodation and the way they treated these considerations so casually. That does not always happen. Even the word accommodation can sometimes make me feel hesitant in stating my needs. I wish more people would think about it this way, especially because there's so many ways you can make events or your wedding in particular more accessible to more people. Allison had some concrete advice about the chair issue in particular. As budgets go up and tastes change and rental companies and venues start to add more to their repertoire, they start to bring in different styles of seating that might look nice, but may be uncomfortable. So there's this one chair that is wildly uncomfortable for most people, I would say, who are 
maybe over like 150 pounds, which is almost everyone. Most people. Who is an adult. Yeah. Yeah. The Market Bistro chair. <laughs> Oh my god. The the metal chair that has like the metal kind of panel in the back and then the arms that kind of wrap around it. Yes. But like a little bit too tightly. You can't really add a cushion to it and have the cushion look good. It kind of messes with the overall appearance. Just like the way the chair is designed, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like sitting in that chair for more than a few minutes is a nightmare. Yes. Honestly, for some people, they probably can't even get into the chair, which I think is so, so wrong. Yeah. Like, if you have a chair that your guests can't sit in, then you messed up yeah. big time. Even just making making small choices like that makes such a difference. And again, it just goes back to overall guest experience and caring about how comfortable they are and when you're thinking about chairs you have to think about that not just like is the chair going to be comfortable should I add a cushion to it but like can can my guests can most people physically get into this chair and that's not necessarily true for everyone with that particular chair yeah See how easy it can be when you're open to more possibilities? I'm not kidding when I say that we get some questions that really make me want to put some people's relatives in time out. I asked Allison about what people could do in these kinds of situations. This has happened multiple times in our Patreon Facebook group that Mm -hmm. someone has been asked to be a bridesmaid or something in a wedding. And then the bride is insisting on a dress that they literally cannot buy or wear. Ugh. And they don't know what to do about it. Have you seen that happen? Ugh. Or, like, what would you... I mean, eventually they end up either having a fight with the bride or, like, dropping out. Like, it's never... It's always situations where I'm like, why are you friends with this person? <laughs> but, like... Yeah. Like, those just seem so yucky. It is. So, luckily, I have yet to experience one of my clients treating their people in that way. Um, that is so gross and so trash. Like, I can't imagine having somebody that I felt close enough to to want to have them in my wedding party, but also saying to them, like, I honestly don't care if this dress doesn't come in, come in your size, like, figure it out. Like, yeah. what, is that, what does that even mean? Some people have it's asked so people to lose weight for their wedding. Oh, yeah, that too. That's gross. Don't talk to me like that. Jeez. Um, <laughs> We're not doing that. Yeah. That's not a thing. Not happening. I don't know who you think you are. What what drove you to say that to me? But we're, we're not going to do that. That's no. not part of this experience. Um, I think that the the best thing you can do is be very honest with the person. Because, again, if that person has asked you to stand up with them at their wedding, chances are you do have some sort of a relationship that should allow you to be honest and truthful and say like I I don't I can't make this happen um I don't feel comfortable it's not possible whatever the case may be um and if that person does not hear what you're saying and is still continuing to kind of stand their ground in a way that is unreasonable then you kind of do have to just bow out and and step away from it sometimes when you're in the thick of it you're in wedding planning you're losing your mind you're super stressed you're just like just falling apart if you come at your friend in a crazy way chances are your friend is going to say back to you hey i didn't really appreciate that you maybe should talk to me in a different way Uh, i don't please don't speak to me that way, yeah. you know? And, and usually when you call people on things, they, they take a step back and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, that was so rude. That was just unreasonable. I don't know why I'm like this. I'm so sorry. Um, and usually when you, like, bring people down to earth, they, they meet you there and they're like, oh, okay, yes, the, this is not fair. This is not right. Um, but if you approach a friend and that friend is saying to you, I'm listening to what you're saying and it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. <laughs> that that person is not that person is not a good friend yeah. to have. After the break, we ask Allison a lot more questions and she gives us some advice and recommendations and resources for other people trying to plan their big fat Greek wedding or other kinds of weddings, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Fat Millie, making a podcast like She's All Fat is hard work. That's why when I do sleep, I need a Buffy comforter to get the job done right. I just got my king size Buffy comforter and I love it. It's perfect for keeping me that exact right level of warm from having weight on top of you to feel secure, but not too much and also cool because you don't want to get super hot if you're a night sweater like me. And I'm not the only one who loves this comforter. It has over 11,000 five-star reviews. We're all on board with the softest, fluffiest comforter we've ever tried. Like softer than cotton. It's part of my skincare routine now, basically. And remember the whole recycling water bottles thing? After only one year, Buffy has recycled and reused over 6 million water bottles. Fat Molly, you can try a Buffy comforter on your own bed for 30 days free before you commit. If it's not for you, send it back, no charge. Go to Buffy.co and use code SAF to get $20 off. That's Buffy.co and code SAF for the best sleep of your life and to match comforters with me. Let's talk about boobs, baby. Some of us have them. Third Love wants to bra them. All of them. Seriously, Third Love offers more than 70 sizes, including their signature half cup sizes. They're thinking about Fat Millie sized boobs here, and it's not just size. Third Love's Fit Finder quiz helps you identify your breast shape, too. Plus, you can try Third Love for 60 days, wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. If you don't love it, return it, and Third Love will wash it and donate it to boobs in need. I'm definitely keeping my third love bra. I really love that when the first guess I made at my size wasn't right, third love had a super quick and easy exchange process and worked with me to find the right size. And now my boobs are happy and comfy in one of the only real bras I will wear. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone, so right now they're offering She's All Fat listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash SAF now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash SAF for 15% off today. We're back. Let's get more into some official wedding planner questions with Allison Davis, official wedding planner. Here's a bunch of clips of us talking about representation, why you should avoid wanting the perfect wedding, a few Q and A's from our family and some resource recommendations. I was just with some of my industry buddies because we get together a lot to talk because it's, we're so isolated. We were talking about how, most people don't really come to us with a high level of education yeah. about weddings because they're engaging with all of this content for the first time. And if it goes well, it'll be the only time. Yeah. So we are getting a lot of people who are coming to us like a few weeks, a few months after getting engaged. And it's also right after they started following wedding accounts on Instagram and started reading the Knot magazine and started like actually paying attention to wedding shows on TV. And that's where most people get their information from. It's like you get it from media um, and your friends and family, but there aren't a lot of places that newly engaged people go to get information from an actual professional. Yeah. So we are constantly in this uphill battle because we don't really have repeat business. We have to educate a new set of people over and over again every year. Interesting. So, (laughs) yeah. So it's, otherwise it's really hard to kind of like feel your way through this industry. And I think it's even harder as someone who is not straight size because so much of it is about appearance and about um, attire and makeup and hair. And, like, I think more and more often, especially now, um, people have been repeating the phrase, representation is important, and finally starting to realize just how important it is. But I think people mostly think about that in terms of... Um, kids and teenagers, like, if kids see Black Panther, they will realize that you can make a movie with all Black people in it, and Black people can be royalty, and, like, all of these things that are great for kids to see, but even something as simple as a wedding, it's, 
it's important to see different types of people getting married and enjoying a wedding. Yeah. And different types of weddings. Um, and to feel like, oh, okay, this is for me too. Yeah. Because if you are not really careful and diligent about finding the right types of outlets, you can start to feel like it's not something that's for you. Yes. And that's the worst. That is the worst. Because yes. it's for everyone. I feel like I personally have kind of a jaded idea of weddings because, and I think most kids of divorced parents do. <laughs> where, That's fair. Yeah. You know, where I'm like, I think it's like not ideal to set yourself up with some sort of fantasy thing. I'm like, no, I want mm-hmm. this to be like a, a actual, I don't want to pretend anything is veneer or perfect, you know? That seems mm-hmm. like setting up your marriage badly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that the best thing that I ever learned from um, one of my peers in this industry is that it's really important to help your clients set their expectations of their wedding day and what their wedding day is going to be like and not to say your big day, your perfect day, the best day ever. All of those those terms are very damaging, Yeah, I think, to um, engaged couples because then you really do start to build up in your mind like nothing's going to go wrong, everything's going to be perfect, not a hair out of place. And, and that's just not realistic for your wedding day or for any day because ultimately your wedding is a day just like any other. And sometimes you leave the house and you forget your umbrella. Sometimes you get to the subway platform and you miss the train sometimes um I don't know like somebody talks to you in a way that you don't like at Starbucks like these are all just things that happen and you you do your best to control as much as possible but there are always going to be things that you can't control so when you work with fat people who are getting married either brides Mm -hmm. or grooms or just partners like however people want to identify like do you have like a stable of go-to resources that you use for them or like how do you do you start the conversations in a different way do you try to make people feel comfortable like how do you go about that with a fatter plus size client Yeah, so I tend to approach that kind of the same way with most of my clients where I say to them, like, I I focus on actually producing your event. But because I'm in this industry, I have a lot of information that I want to share with you to make your life easier. So I'm going to focus on making sure that, like, your lighting guy is nailing it. But in the meantime, I can tell you where you can find bridesmaids dresses that don't only come in size four or don't just look good on people who are flat chested or whatever the case may be. And so I approach it kind of the same way with everyone where I'm like, I I have resources for you. And I think that... That is something that people value because they don't feel like they're being treated differently because they aren't a straight size. Um, And I always give people kind of the caveat, like, here are some designers that I really like. Here's what their sizing is like. Sure. But I try to be really careful about not recommending brands or designers that don't cater to a wide range of sizes because... Wedding dress sizing is very different from um, just regular clothing sizing. And even though it's not accessible for everyone, um, and I sometimes hesitate to recommend it, but if I know that a client is trying to spend like five to seven thousand or sometimes more on a gown, I recommend going custom, honestly. Yeah. What about on the like even larger side? Like, what about super fat people who are maybe si- above size twenty six, like size twenty eight mm-hmm. or thirty? Do you know of places where they can go for that? Honestly, I wish I did, but I don't. It's definitely um, a a huge issue in our community because, for whatever reason, I think that brands and designers just are behind. So as far as, like, going into a store and picking something off the rack or um, having something available to you in your size, I think there's still a, a huge gap for people who are over 26 or 28, um, which is really unfortunate because, again, it really does go back to um, not only representation but making people feel like they are meant to be a part of something, like something yeah. is for them. And... It's really hard when you can't find 
something that you want so badly to have, especially clothing, um, when you can't find it in a size that fits you. It kind of makes you feel like less than yeah. in some way or not wanted or like you're not nobody expects you to have this experience or something right yeah it's like it's really easy to kind of examine it in that way and and think about it in terms of well they don't make this in my size because nobody buys it in my size because this is just not a thing that people in my size need right I mean, that's so not so, true. There's plenty of super fat right. people who get married. Yeah. Even though it's in my notes, I feel like this is still a resource not just for bridesmaids, but also for brides. Eshakti oh, is, yeah. like, the be-all, end-all, I feel like, of affordable, customized clothing. Um, and they have great casual options and, like, sundresses and all that kind of stuff but they also make formal wear they also make bridesmaids dresses i tell people all the time tell your bridesmaids to get measured put their measurements in each shakti everybody can have a dress that fits them perfectly that's awesome and it's not it's not ridiculous it's it's not aggressively expensive um and more often than not it's something that they can wear again and it's going to fit them really really nicely that's awesome um, but yeah, Eshakti definitely has options, and I'm pretty sure the customization fee to like have them make a dress literally exactly to your measurements is like twenty bucks. That's awesome. I want to say. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, the Eshakti I think is is the jam. I love Eshakti. Almost everything I wear for my events when I'm working is a is Eshakti dresses. Allison's truly incredible. She made me feel comfortable about my wedding and I don't even have an upcoming wedding. I'm not even engaged yet. I still feel comfortable about it because of Allison. If you want to book her to plan your wedding or just reach out to her with questions, you can check out her website in the show notes or email her at allison at davisrow.com. She's based on the East Coast, but travels everywhere for her clients. Honestly, bookmarking her site right now. <laughs> Let me take you back to Jack and Amanda's wedding. We were at a beautiful hotel in Phoenix, the swanky resort and spa capital of the world. It was a beautiful, bright blue desert sky day, clear and warm and a cool breeze in the green cactus. And it was just lovely. It was a really beautiful day. I cried the whole time. There's something really special about this kind of wedding with people gathered from all points of someone's life when you've been friends with them while they gather these people and you remember how and when these people came into your friend's life and you look around at their life full of support and growth and learning and fun and a dog named Waffles that your friends have built for themselves and you feel like, oh, like life can feel so warm and happy and good. Here's another clip from my wedding blog the night before the rehearsal. I don't know. It's nice to have a friend from high school like Jack who, like, like I think a lot of guys don't always talk to their friends super much all the time. Um, but Jack and I talk on the phone, and every time we talk or are in person together, it's like no time has passed, you know, which is nice. It's also nice that somebody who saw me, like, Maybe not at my worst, <laughs> but like at pretty weird, still likes me and wants me to be in their life to the point that they want me in their wedding. That's really, really special. And I'm really proud to be up there and support Jack. And it's going to be really cool. I had so much fun at Jack and Amanda's wedding. The ceremony was really sweet and beautiful. I just loved it. And we both smashed the glass at the end. Yeah, that was scary. Some broken pieces came out of the thing. Oh, really? Flying yeah. in. <laughs> Sorry. It, it felt very much like your parents would be happy with it and you would be happy with it. And like, everyone was going to be happy. I also liked the dances you guys did with your parents. I cried really hard during both of those. Victor kept asking me if I was okay. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was just, oh, is there love? It's like, oh my God. <laughs> like the thing that always gets me at weddings is is like the bride looking at the groom or the groom looking at the bride. And both of you like watched each other do those dances with like little tears and just smiling. And I was like, they just 
love each other. It's just nice. <laughs> Jack and Amanda did it. They got married. Does it feel different? No. no. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> love y'all. Thank you for being my friends. And good luck to everyone out there starting to think about planning a wedding. There's a bunch of resources in the show notes for you. And your family is here for you along the way. There is no need. You need to be sweating about planning for your wedding. (laughs) Bye. And that's our show. She's All Fat was created by me, Sophie Carter-Khan, and April K. Quio, who was on a break this season. You know what she said to me the other day, though, is that she wants to name her future kid Elo Milo or Elo Milo or something. I was like, all right. We are an independent production. If you'd like to support the work we do, you can join our Patreon by visiting patreon.com slash she's all fat pod. When you pledge to be a supporter, you'll get all sorts of goodies and extra content. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to the stuff we mentioned today. And don't forget to send us your questions via email or voice recording to FYI at she's all fat pod.com. Please make sure to leave us a review on Apple podcasts. It's super important in making sure people find the show. If you leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, we'll give you a shout out on the pod next week. Our theme music was composed and produced by Carolyn Pennypacker Riggs. Our website was designed by Jesse Fish, and our logo is by Britt Scott. This episode was co produced and edited by Maria Bertel. Our junior producer is Lynn Barbera. I am our host and co producer. Our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter handles are at She's All Fat Pod. You can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and wherever else you get your podcasts. Bye. I want every white actor <laughs> replaced. <laughs> I want I want Jennifer Lawrence fired from every movie she's working on and replaced with Kiki Palmer and I want it now. <laughs>